Hey, welcome to my show, and today we're going to be focusing on a bit of steam heating history. Um, this is the Warren Webster uh, Silphon valve, and I've uh, used nail polish to bring out the uh, name, the script name, and I think you can see the Webster name there, a little harder to see. Uh, the handle is missing. This is not an angle valve, but a straight valve. This is the only example that, that I have. Um, interestingly enough, it has the patent number in pretty large uh, numbers, uh, easy to read, uh, not a patent date, which is almost uh, useless. And I, this is the copy of the patent that you can get uh, online um, and it is quite extensive it's like 10 pages and 36 uh, patentable items on this thing uh, by Mr. Uh, Geisler and the interesting thing about this particular drawing as opposed to other patent drawings is that it is very detailed and pretty much shows exactly what you're going to get here um, you remove the top and you've got to if you ever put this back you got to remember to put uh, these uh, little tines in uh, these holes there that's one of the little peculiarities about this particular unit and you have the sulfon or bellows and you can see a lot of the the details of this uh, device are reflected in the drawings. The drawings are quite extensive and accurate, uh, just as a point of interest. This is the um, element, uh, the disc, the ceiling disc, um, usually a, a Jenkins material, uh, very hard, sort of rubber-like which eventually fails. This one is actually cracked. Uh, some are just simply gone. I think you can see that uh, this was uh, staked, and so this was never really uh, designed to ever be removed. These are solder joints. Now, like most Warren Webster stuff, uh, this is extremely well built, and so it is unlikely that this would uh, fail. Uh, but over time, this does what well, might stick or the bellows might um, crack and water and steam come out um, at the top here. And that's usually an indication that this has failed. So you've left with a couple of choices. Do you um, replace the entire valve or can you get some kind of repair kit? And the answer, of course, is you should, yes, you can. You get a repair kit um, this is let's see if I can zoom out a little bit here here we are and there's Macon controls sold by the Tunstall Corporation and there is a Warren Webster Silphon valve and then there's the drop-in kit and then there is the uh, repair. So let's take a look at the kit. This is what I ordered for this. I'm going to open it up and see what we got. To Tunstall Corporation here. And for this particular valve, you want the Macon M-A-C-R-S-W-W three-quarter inch sill or silphon. And they have over a hundred of these um, valve rebuild kits. Um, so you've got to know exactly what you're going to need to order here. So this goes inside of here. There's the bottom 
part and there's the spud and here's the top part and this gasket then is pressed against the uh, seat uh, so you got to make sure that's uh, nice and clean I would probably use a little lanny seize on there and that goes in there like so then this gets set in place I just wanted to show you on the outside this is about the gap there's not much of a gap so it definitely reduces the uh, steam flow which is what you uh, would normally want anyway um, so it has a pretty good valve authority uh, for most applications you have a that goes down and you push down and turn um, the o-ring there seals on the old valve then yeah you really crank on that and now let's see there's the you can see the inside there and the travel of of this if you push down on this it's not much not much at all and you can get this from Macon controls uh, also you know through Tunstall that fits on there like that and you tighten down this and then you have your hand wheel which can control the unit I missed it Admit it doesn't quite have that Art Deco charm, but it gets you out of trouble. Now, if you want to go the thermostatic route, um, generally you have to get the remote like this, and there's your. You don't get this. This is this is a separate item uh, that you must buy, um, or you can get this, which is this is your. Um, actuator and dial here and this must be put somewhere outside of the area of the heat as to um, what will happen if you just set it up like this is the heat if the sensing unit is in this space here and uh, this is set over top what will happen is the heat will then um, shut the unit off prematurely and so that's why you have to have a remote sensor and there are various um, versions of, of this valve, uh, this actuator, excuse me, this thermostatic actuator. Now, why did they go with um, the bellows? Uh, the quick answer to that is vacuum. Um, back in the coal era, uh, vacuum was seen as a way of um, stretching the efficiency of the coal fire uh, for reasons won't really go into, but um, vacuum induces a discipline which you it's very difficult to find a vacuum leak. So the engineers of that era were looking for any way that they could to make absolutely certain that no air could get by here and in inside the uh, the system. Um, Silphon was a brand name. Other uh, manufacturers were using. The bellows principle. This is one from. Uh, this is a bishop at Babcock. Uh, the best way to take this off is uh, take the handle, and take the screw off, take the handle off, and then you get a uh, impact and take this off. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, it's really tight because uh, somebody went at it with a wrench. And this is what you get uh, most of the time. As you can see, the um, Jenkins element is gone. Uh, that's been staked on, so it's very difficult to repair. Um, this comes apart. Uh, the advantage of the bellows, again, another advantage we touch on is that the um, uh, mechanism for raising and lowering the bellows is out of the stream flow of the steam, and so it's less likely to knock uh, be knocked off. However, the uh, main issue is the solder joint. As you can see, the solder joint on this one failed, and this uh, leaks around the stem. One of the weaknesses of this design, unless you account for it. But even then, it's virtually non-repairable. Uh, the other people that uh, used it was 
train. This is a, a version of the. And what will tend to happen is this will lock up and you, you have a difficulty getting this out. You can see this uh, bellows has failed. Uh, you've got to, uh, they did it. It did an awful lot of effort of making sure this would not be uh, twisted axially or otherwise it would fail. Uh, here they've built a groove in that you have to uh, line this up on. It's another train wreck here. There's, I think I cleaned it off and you can see the word train. Um, this has failed. They have a spring mechanism. This either locks closed or locks open. And of course the uh, Jenkins disc has long since uh, passed on. And so the best thing you can do with this uh, to be, this came out of a convector. Uh, the space is limited. You can get a socket and get that off. So we segue into that. What we've got here is a 3D printed um, unit, which will, will get this uh, punched out in steel. Uh, see, that fits over there very nicely. Um, and then we've uh, loaded up the file on a thumb drive, and then we'll get back a uh, this in steel, and I'll use that to then uh, weld up a uh, socket, which then can be used to uh, quickly remove this if uh, space is, is limited. And also time, saves time too. So um, thank you very much. I uh, hope this uh, helps. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.